and welcome to my channel. My name is Sifi, I am a personal trainer and nutrition coach and I have a very annoying schnauzer who will yap and bark throughout the entirety of this video. He's down there by my feet. Yes. Okay, let's do this. Alcohol use disorder is a pattern of alcohol use that involves problems controlling your drinking. Well, isn't that like 99% of people over the age of 16? I don't know why this term's really twatted me off. It has. I mean, I didn't even know alcohol use disorder was a thing. Is this just a really woke way of saying alcoholic? Have I just been woke? Oh, no, wait. Alcohol use disorder includes a level of drinking that is sometimes called alcoholism. That feels a bit more familiar, doesn't it? I don't know why I feel so triggered. Am I triggered? I'm not sure if I'm upset or if this makes me happy. My feelings are all over the place. I'm discombobulated. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to this video. If you don't know me, my name is Sifi. I am a personal trainer and nutrition coach, and I work with women who have been trying for years to lose weight, build muscle, and stop emotionally eating. My clients get both mentally and physically stronger as well as ditching the emotional reactionary yo-yo dieting, patterns that keep them stuck, as well as ending the notion that food and food restriction, as well as aggressive dieting, works. I'm a pretty different experience from most traditional personal trainers in that I will not work with my client on their strategy for weight loss without working on the sets of behaviours and beliefs that got them to where they are in the first place. Weight loss is 1000% down to the strategy paired with the work of emotional resilience, constructive behaviours and ability to cope and respond to life's very, very temperamental sets of circumstances without going towards self-sabotage. Speaking about self-sabotage, hmm, alcohol. <laughs> Yeah, I have done some pretty aggressive self-sabotage techniques using alcohol. And today, I want to talk about it. I am sure for the dozens of you out there that actually watch my content, it will be no surprise that this former fat, binge-eating mess of a woman used to spend quite a bit of her time pissed. This is going to be somewhat of a cathartic and reflective video. I've never really spoken very much about alcohol, only in that I don't drink, and that I can't drink, and that I won't drink. Not ever. Not ever, ever. So let's see if we can create a video together. Don't worry, I'll do the editing. Let's see if we can answer the question, can you lose weight and still drink alcohol? As well as sort out, you know, outside my head, the sort of silly buggers I got up to with alcohol. Right. If you're one of those that likes to consume content that's only 15 seconds long, then please feel free to leave very quickly and rest assured in the knowledge that yes, you can, in fact, drink alcohol and still lose weight. For those of you who actually treasure some lighthearted entertainment and a bit of nuance on subjects that take longer than 15 seconds to explain, then let us get started. I don't actually know where to start with my story. Well, I guess we could start with what alcohol actually is. I mean, the more you know. According to the WHO, alcohol is a psychoactive substance with dependence producing properties that has been widely used in many cultures for centuries. The harmful use of alcohol causes a high burden of disease and has significant social and economic consequences. Oh, well, we're off to a flying start here, aren't we? Hmm. I don't want this to be just about how problematic alcohol is, could be, but in all honesty, just go look at yourself. Go check out any of these. I mean, it's just... <laughs> huh. I dive in too far. Well, you're not gonna watch, are you? And it takes me f***ing ages to make these videos. And also, because the likelihood is if you've smashed into Coach Google, can I still lose weight and drink alcohol, then the chances are you're not really here to look for ways of abstaining. Although I come from a history, a very colourful history, of being quite literally surrounded by problematic drinkers, I am acutely aware that there are those out there who can drink responsibly. And it's very likely that you are one of these people. If you can enjoy a libation or two to enrich a social event or culinary experience, and in my opinion, there is nothing more glorious than drinking a gorgeous glass of red wine whilst preparing Sunday dinner and singing opera at the top of your lungs. Uh, however, I never really just stopped at the one glass of wine, but we'll talk about that later. As I was digging around on PubMed, I came across one paper looking at the association between alcohol, calorie intake, and overweight and obesity in English adults 
adults and it states that given that both obesity and hazardous alcohol consumption are issues of public health concern, understanding the relation between alcohol calories and weight gain is important as are the efforts to raise awareness of alcohol calories as empty. I would agree, after predominantly coaching women for nearly 20 years now, generally people don't understand alcohol and how it works. So that's clear that up now by looking at alcohol from at least the view of its impact or potential impact impact on weight loss from both a nutritional scope and a behavioral scope. When we drink alcohol, what we're actually consuming is ethanol or ethyl alcohol, which is the only type of alcohol that you can drink. I think this is very relevant to point out because the majority of time when I'm conversing with my female clients, they have the belief that the calories they're drinking are from carbohydrates. It isn't. Calories contained in alcoholic beverages is mostly down to the ethanol. And there are seven calories in one gram of ethanol. Carbohydrates have four calories per one gram, so it's nearly double. The other thing to note about calories from ethanol is that they're non-nutritive. It doesn't have anything like fiber, protein, vitamins, minerals, you know, all the things that we actually need from nutritive calories, or just, let's call it food, hey? We use calories from carbohydrates, we just simply do not use calories from ethanol. The body metabolizes ethanol completely differently from how it does the other three macronutrients. Since it has no nutritive benefits, but it has a caloric load, the body cannot use it and it cannot store it. So therefore the body considers it a toxin. Because it's a toxin, it's got to prioritize its elimination before all else. So this question always comes up. And the answer is, as always in nutrition, yes, well, sort of, hmm, it depends. Really, we just need to look at the bigger picture. And I'm sorry, this is going to take 15 seconds longer. When we drink alcohol, it is metabolized by the liver. The liver is huge of metabolism. It receives digestive products in the form of glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, and glycerol. So all macronutrients, so yes. The liver is involved in fat metabolism and also it synthesizes lipoproteins, cholesterol, and phospholipids. The liver is also vital for detoxification of endogenous and exogenous substances. I can never pronounce those words properly. That are harmful to the body. So, little side note here, everyone is obsessed with doing detoxes, aren't they? But you know what? You have a liver Help. and it's its job and it will do a far better job than your lemon water and very expensive swamp pills that you try and consume in order to detoxify yourself. So endogenous substances are things that originate from inside ourselves and exogenous substances are things that we put into ourselves, like drugs and alcohol. She's not here. She's not here, darling. <laughs> I hate it when I can't pronounce words. So as mentioned, alcohol has no nutritive qualities to it, can't be used or stored, so the liver is just gonna prioritize its metabolism. Prioritizing meaning put first. So yes, it will postpone fat burning, um, as it will postpone the breakdown of carbs and protein. Yes, we stop metabolizing fat when we drink. Your poor liver will be getting on with the labor intensive job of breaking down that martini chanzano or glass of chardonnay or whatever it happens to be your tipple. The thing that is worth noting is how long alcohol actually stays in our system. This is going to very greatly vary between people, so based on height, weight, genetics, gender, but a good estimate is to say one hour per one year unit of alcohol. So let's put that into some perspective. Love me some perspective. So let's say a person drinks four small glasses of wine over an evening, which by all accounts is perfectly civil. That is around nine units of alcohol. So that is a minimum of nine hours that the body has to prioritize alcohol above all else. And that's quite a long time to go without metabolizing fats and other nutrients whilst putting a toxic load on the liver, especially if the next day a person goes out all over again because it's a social weekend and does it again. Let's answer this question because this is why you're here, isn't it? When it comes to actually losing overall weight and body fat, it really does come back down to 
the same thing I say all the time. Your overall calorie intake and your overall calorie expenditure. An overall calorie deficit is going to be the leading factor when it comes to your successful weight loss. Regardless if it's nutritive or not, ethanol has a calorie load. So if you are having those calories within your deficit, you will absolutely lose weight. Feel your boots. Have one on me. Tell me, is it nice? Weight loss is a thousand percent down to the strategy paired with the work of emotional resilience, constructive behaviors, and ability to cope and respond to life's temperamental circumstances without self-sabotage. People use food and alcohol to cope. So what are the two things we're gonna do when we're gonna self-sabotage? Me, I know that I used to do it. Have a bad day at the office, drink a glass of wine, feel feelings you don't like, eat a load of food. So once again, here we are trying to find some finite answer, but as always, it's just not so black and white. It's not just about the calories, it's about the behavior as well. Alcohol is classified as a depressant because it slows down the central nervous system, causing a decrease in motor coordination, reaction time, and intellectual performance. That being said, let's look at the bigger picture. When we have a drink, it is so much easier to consume so many calories so much more quickly. Because not only are you drinking the alcohol itself, but you're drinking whatever's mixed in with the alcohol. I really do like comparing alcoholic drinks with the equivalent of food, because I think it puts things in a bit more perspective. We'd probably question somebody's strategy for weight loss if they were downing a couple of Mars bars every day. Yet, drink a couple of pints and it was, Calorically, it's kind of the same thing. And honestly, I mean... <laughs> it drives me so crazy. It's fine, just accept. But people will freak out. I get questions about, is eating two or three eggs in the morning safe? Yet, think nothing thing about downing a couple of glasses of wine or getting twatted at the weekend. I pulled this from the NHS. Um, have a look at it. <laughs> As we can tell, the compound effect of regular consumption, well, it amounts to quite a lot. I actually found this drinks calculator. I'm going to put the link in the description below. It will let you know how many units you're drinking and also it will look at the calories for you as well. Uh, <laughs> I did mine earlier from when I used to drink, and uh, yeah. <laughs> it's impressive. Tip two, you give less of a fuck. Come on, how much easier is it to forget what you're actually trying to achieve or just getting caught up in the moment and then just not caring so much? Often when we drink alcohol, we get a false sense of security and a false sense of bravado and a lot of oh, blow it, it doesn't really matter. So not only do we drink more, but then we tend to eat more in a sort of response to drinking. Do not even argue me on this point, you kettle crisp munching, German toast eating, kebab van visiting woman. Tip three. Ah, uh, hangovers. Hangovers are the body's reaction to poisoning and a withdrawal from alcohol. Hangover symptoms include fatigue, depression, headache, thirst, nausea, and vomiting. And I've added to the list only eating what you can face and once again, just not caring. So as you can see, it's not really just the calories of the drink itself. It's down to how it makes us feel, how it makes us act, choices we make, and generally how we react to alcohol. I react terribly to alcohol. In fact, I don't believe there's a single person out there that gets hangovers quite as bad as mine. I have literally prayed to the gods for the sweet, sweet release of death. Yes. So I guess maybe if you're still here, what's my story? I am sober and I believe I have been for three years minimum now. Thank you very much. Not only did I survive a pandemic whilst looking after my father with Alzheimer's, starting up a new business and raising my child, I didn't touch a single drop. Hmm. I'm not going to lie here. I am struggling to put something together that's going to be interesting to listen to. And I'm also keenly aware of the length of my videos. But I do want to share and I believe it's important and to Throughout kind of putting this all together, I was messaging one of my very dearest friends who's out of rehab and is in her first year of sobriety. And I really value what she has to say. And she really has championed me on to share my experience, strength and hope as an act of service. So I will, but a bit loosely because quite frankly, <laughs> it's quite embarrassing. <laughs> I feel like I need to that's chain like that's change areas shall we that's that's 
come with me. Huh. I refer to myself as being an alcoholic, but it doesn't really sit right with me. Definitely drank to get drunk, and I definitely drank most nights. I would consciously struggle not to have a, a drink. The closing the last chapter, I went and saw my client and, and I said, so I guess I should um, really close off with my opinion around alcohol, right? For the most part, I see it as a problem. I don't think it's lighthearted. I really don't like the glorification of, you know, why mummy drinks and I hate all the, like, the, the glasses and the memes, like it's Prosecco time, yay for a drink, I survived by gin, like I, I, I hate that. And I think mostly it's because it normalises the fact that we have a nation that seemingly can't get by without drinking. I think this glorification of alcohol actually hides a lot of people's problem with drinking. As a society, we're drinking more and more and in larger quantities. And it, I think it's totally socially acceptable. And in fact, if you think about it, alcohol is really the only drug that we use socially and we actively try and push on other people and we feel like we need to apologize for like not partaking or like really sort of like no no thank you i don't want to drink so i think it can be quite hard for a lot of people and understandably so to say no in social circumstances i don't like normalizing drinking around children either so what can i say i'm a i'm, I'm a child of alcoholics and you know, because of certain fellowships that I've been in, I've been surrounded by people affected by other people's drinking. So of course I'm gonna say that. For the smaller part, I think having the occasional cocktail or beautiful glass of wine with friends is wonderful. I wish I could. I mean, foregoing alcohol is actually quite hard for me. Like if you don't think that I don't wanna go on a date with my husband to a beautiful wine bar or be able to toast a glass of champagne to someone's marriage or have a pims on a hot summer's day, Cozying up in front of the fire in the winter in the Cotswolds with a cup of tea is not the same as sharing a bottle of Merlot. <laughs> I want to do things like I want to go to Tuscany, I want to go to a vineyard and do wine tastings, but, but I can't. And you know, I can't. It's just, I can't. So that's why I exercise positive discipline. Like, I can't. Some might say that's very restricted, but to, to my opinion, nothing beats the joy of having a life without alcohol. Nothing. But anyway, we got quite serious for a moment there. I'd also like to state that I'm also a really fun drunk. Hmm. But more on that another time, I feel. Uh, right, I could bang on. We haven't even covered the article that pissed me off or um, we haven't looked at like statistics or hacks for drinking and weight loss, but well, I wasn't gonna do that because quite frankly, if you are somebody who is struggling with your weight loss yet won't give up drinking. Well, you might want to check that. Oh dear, God, that was a biggie, wasn't it? Uh, click like, subscribe, please leave me a comment below and please, please, as an act of service, send this video to somebody if you think they've got issues with drinking. Whatever, send me some hate, send me some love, I don't care, it all helps the algorithm grow. And I'll see you next time. God, why does everything have to be having special names nowadays? Should we start calling balding people follically challenged?